What's up everybody, Big Sweet C here with a special little video for you. Today I want to unveil our 150 rune level astrologer intelligence dexterity build for the amazing Elden Ring. I have finally gotten a chance to put this video together. We've completed the game. I went with the Rani Age of Stars storyline ending just felt it was the most natural being an astrologer slash sorcerer build and uh, now uh, that I've gotten a chance to uh, finish this up I want to bring this out to you in case you guys are looking for a fun character to build but having all said that the rune level that we finished at was 150 I went 50 into vigor that I believe is the soft cap is at 50 uh, and it gave us uh, 1,772 HP if you included uh, one of the talismans that I, I used, the Erd Tree, uh, Erd Tree's Favor plus two, and I'll get to those in a second. Rounded us up to 1,772 HP, and like I said, we can actually take several hits uh, before I really have to start panicking about HP, uh, which really helps out in the, the dual aspect of it. Mind, we are at 35. That gives us a nice round 200 FP to kind of uh, to um, spam the spells if we need to. Specifically speaking, more along the lines of like the PVE uh, when you're playing the game as opposed to the PVP if you're doing the duels. Maybe when you're using, uh, when you're invading people, you might need to use a lot of FP. But uh, we'll get to, we'll get to all that uh, in a little bit. Endurance. Stamina doesn't seem to be as irreliable, for lack of a better term, in this game as uh, as the previous Dark Souls uh, Soulsborn games that I've come across. I usually go to the soft cap. I think it's 40 from Endurance, uh, but 20 was ample for everything that I wanted to do with this build, so I didn't really feel like I needed to go into Endurance anymore. Uh, as we still have a, a medium uh, load, so we're still, we're not fat rolling. Uh, and I can use whichever um, staff and uh, and weapon that I would like to uh, like to use with this build. The weapons and the staves don't weigh nearly as much as, say, like a great sword or anything. So we didn't really need the equipment load. Uh, and like I was saying, even though you do use stamina when you attack with magic, 20 just seemed to be more than enough. Uh, and we made up for it with the turtle talisman that we'll get to in a minute to help uh, boost the recovery of our stamina loss. Strength, we went with 13. Technically, for the weapon that we wanted to use, I only needed 12. I went into 13 to round us off to 149 as opposed to putting one into anything else. Uh, but really, strength, that 13th, that extra one is just to round us up to 150. 12 is really, really where I probably should have stopped at. Uh, for this character. Dexterity we've got up to 35. Between 30 and 35 you actually get an increase in casting speed. I do believe the soft cap I think is 55 with dexterity. There was no way I was going to go that much into investing because I did not want to take that much uh, out of vigor uh, and definitely didn't want to take that much out of mind. So dexterity I was contemplating stopping at 30. I went up to 35. Uh, just to give us a little extra juice because the katana that we are using does scale with dexterity as well and then finally our major hitter for this one for the astrology build obviously is intelligence intelligence is our magic damage it's also scaling with our weapon to give us that uh, that bonus armament damage as you can see in the upper right hand corner we're at 184 with our first armament which is our staff the lucette staff and uh, we're at 671 with our Moon Veil Katana. Uh, anything above 650, in my opinion, is really, really good. So the fact that I've got 671 with a melee weapon on a non-melee character, uh, in my opinion, is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Faith and Arcane, I did not make any investments in. Uh, because we started with the Astrologer build, they start with 7 and 9. I put nothing into either one of those because I had no interest in using any of the faith or arcane stuff uh, a couple of tweaks here and there but this is our final build statistics i actually really enjoyed playing as this character um the idea with the pvp is as you can see in our spells we've got our glintstone sorcery 
that's really your spam spell uh, just to just to get rid of all the ads and the uh, the additional enemies uh, on screen when they start to come at you. It's also probably the fastest spell, uh, fastest attack spell that I use. Um, down the line, we've got the uh, Ruin of Stars, which is a fantastic one for the PvP aspect and invaders. Uh, it pops up, I think, four or five little glintstone spell sorceries that then track your enemy. It's fantastic for uh, actual invaders, whether they're NPC invaders or real people invaders. Uh, and then once you get into the um, duelist aspect of it, uh, I predominantly just use that. I get their attention with that, and then as they come trying to avoid that rolling towards my way, that's when I hit them with the Uchi uh, sorry, not the Uchi Katana, the Moon Veil. Uh, katana blade and uh, usually that's enough to kind of stun them to get a couple attacks depending on their resistances their robustness uh, specifically maybe you get them hit them up with the with the bleed damage accumulation as well in terms of our weapons let's see what we've got equipped first and format the loose sets glintstone staff plus 10 i believe i got this uh, by following uh, sorcerer selen's quest line uh, when you uh, when you get sent to um, to find one of her old masters, I believe I came across this guy in that uh, It uses the somber dragging stones to upgrade. That's why you can only go to a plus 10 My secondary weapon is the moon veil plus 10. It is a fantastic katana Again, it uses the somber smithing stones. So you only get it up to plus 10 it scales with both dexterity and intelligence which are our two main categories it also causes blood loss buildup of 50. So again, a lot of things and a lot of enemies seem to be fairly weak against hemorrhage. Hit them up with that bleed damage, and uh, one one critical hack can really uh, sorry critical attack uh, can really uh, make or break your uh, uh, whether you're going to win or or not against that enemy. And um, it's come in handy multiple times for me. <laughs> The shield, we have the Beast Crest Heater Shield on right now, but I also go back and forth between the Blue Crest Heater Shield, the Standard Heater Shield, the Inverted Hawk Heater Shield, and the Eclipse Crest Shield, depending on what kind of damage I'm going for. As you can see in the damage negation, they're all 100 physical damage, that's why I use them in the first place. But depending on which version of these you use, this one has the highest against Lightning, this one has the highest against Fire and Holy, You've got your magic pre uh, protection here. You've got your holy protection here. Another holy protection here for the basic heater shield. So depending on what type of enemy we're going across would be the type of shield that I use. They're all the same weight. They have all the same, uh, you know, they're all the same class. And again, that 100% physical damage just depending on what kind of protection we're looking for in that secondary case. Uh, and then finally our torch. You can never go anywhere without a little bit of light, so you definitely need that torch. For the armor, I didn't see any reason to change up what I was wearing at any given point, so we just kept the astrologer robe stuff, uh, just because I knew it was going to give me, at bare minimum, the medium equip load, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. When it came down to the headgear, I did find a couple of things that were special. Spell blades, spell blades pointed hat that you get from Roger uh, gives us the benefit of strengthening your glintstone sorcery skills. So when I'm just kind of in a mob area playing against the game itself, I pop this guy on because it does increase my attack spells a little bit. Uh, but I've also switched it up with the white mask because of our bleed damage. It uh, slightly attack, uh, raises attack power when you do cause blood loss. And uh, so if, uh, if I plan on using more melee bleed attack damage, this is the one that, uh, that we will go for instead. But these two are the main ones that I use. Finally, we have the Urge Tree Favor Plus 2. This is an end game item. You get it in Lendow Capital after you make the decision to burn or not burn the tree. Green Turtle Talisman raises our stamina recovery speed. And then finally, to make up for the fact that we don't have a whole lot of heavy armor on, we've got our Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which enormously boosts physical damage negation. I believe I got this in Crumbling Dragon Fazula. Crumbling... or Rumazula, whatever that place is called. 
Uh, and then finally, the modeled necklace raises robustness, immunity, and focus. Again, giving us more protection against the different types of special attacks. So sleep, madness, hemorrhage, frost damage. This increases uh, resistances to all three, so you don't get hit up with that random attack from Scarlet Rot. As you can see, I do have the arrows up here. I do have a backup weapon, the longbow plus seven. This is basically just in case I need to hit something from far range that my magic spells won't grab. Uh, I don't really use it as a weapon, so to speak. But that uh, that is basically our character. I actually, like I said, have had a phenomenal time playing with it. It reminded me a lot, a lot, a lot of the assassin build from uh, from our Dark Souls 3 days. So if you liked that video, I hope you liked this video as well. By the way, I'm going to leave you guys with some fantabulous dual PvP. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day uh, watching the PvP. By the way, that's going to do it for this one. Big Sweet Seed, that's me. Wishing YouTube, that's you. Wonderful day, night, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it might be. As long as you're watching, I'm wishing you a wonderful watching time. Sweetness, signing off. Peace.